All right, this is a video over two ropes holding a ball in a spot. <laughs> Sorry. So we have two ropes. And the first thing we need to notice is that this rope is at a 90 degree angle with the wall. That means it is not providing any force up or force down. So this is not holding the ball up. It is only holding it over here. So it's only pulling it that way. It's not pulling it up at all. So that means that this ball that has a force of a thousand newtons is only being held up by this rope. And this rope must have some force. Now we aren't told what that force is. We don't know what, we'll say, force, force one. We don't know what force one is. And force two. So force two. All we know is that this thousand newtons is only being held up by this force one. So that means that the force, this thousand newtons, is pulling straight down, must be held up by some force that's pulling it straight up. So that means that this force, the y component of this force, must be equal to a thousand newtons. So the y component of force 1 must equal a thousand newtons. And again, that's because force 2 has no y component. It's just pulling it straight that way. And if we know that for the y component must be a thousand newtons, so then if we know that this is pulling it straight that way, then F1x, so the force, so I guess force 1, the x component of force 1, must be equal to force 2. So the x, so I mean another way of writing that is force 2 y component plus force 2 x component and we know that the force 2 of the, the, y, the y component of force 2 is equal to 0. So that's 0 so then it's just the x component of force 2. So the x component of force 1 must equal the x component of force 2. So then we know what, then we know we have some, we have something to put these two forces together. And we know what this angle is, which is 60 degrees. So we know what that angle is. So if, if we know what this angle is, we know what y is, then we can find out what fx, f1x is. So we can do that if we remember that. So, gah. Toa. Oops, Toa. So we will do, I guess, I guess we have to do Toa. Tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. In this case, the opposite is Fy, so Fy, so F1y over F1x. So we don't know what the adjacent is. We know what the angle is. And again, the angle is 60 degrees. So the tangent of 60 degrees must equal must equal 1y over f1x. And with a little bit of rearrangement, we can find that f1x must equal the force, the y component of the force over tangent of 60 degrees. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we have the tangent of 60 degrees. So we'll do 60 degrees and take the tangent of it. That gives us 1.732. 1.732. And again, y, f, 1y must must be equal to the thousand newtons, so that's over a thousand newtons. So then fx must be equal to a thousand newtons divided by 1.732 is 577 newtons. So fx must be 577 newtons. So f one x must equal five hundred and seventy seven point one newtons newtons oh 
0.3, so we'll go with 4 newtons. And if we know what fx is, then f2, f2 must be equal to 577.4 newtons, but it's going in the opposite direction, so it will be negative. So, I guess this is actually a negative newton, and then y, of course, is positive, so... Since this is going down, this is a negative 1,000 newtons, and since this is going that way, it is a negative 577.4 newtons. So, we have now found out what all the forces are. So we know that the summation of the forces, or we went off the summation of the forces, to equal zero. So we assume that, now, for it to be static, we must have the summation of the moments also equal zero. Now, the, the good thing is that they're all at this point, so they're all going from this point right here. So if we mark our, if we do have this be our point, then the distances, all the distances, are zero. So, and if we remember, the moment is equal to the force times the distance, so that is equal to zero. So that's why we don't have to do the moments, because the moments of force one, moment one, force one times distance one, which distance one is zero, is equal to zero. And the same thing is true for moment two. They're all just equal to zero. Kind of going over that a little too much. But let's say instead... Oh, darn. Let's say instead we had this be the point. Well, right here, if we had this be the point, the thousand newtons has a distance from this point that's perpendicular to this point of zero. So that's the moment of this thousand newtons is zero. The y component of force of force um, one is also zero, because it has a thousand newtons pulling it up straight that way. So it's also zero. So then we are left with this distance. And then we have force two pulling it directly that way at that distance, and force one pulling it directly that way at that distance. So those two, these two, these, the two moments that force two is causing you to go that way, and the moment that's, that force, I'm sorry, that's force one's causing it to go that no, force 2 is causing it to go that way. <laughs> and for, oh, I'm sorry. And force 2 is going that way. So these two moments, so this is moment 1 and moment 2, those two moments are equal to each other, except opposite, so they cancel each other out, so the moments are still 0, or the summation of the moments are still 0. So it actually doesn't matter where we choose to pick the point. After all, it all it'll always come up, it will always sum up to zero. The reason we pick this point right here is because it's really easy. The mathematics is really simple and and I mean we could do it other places but it just causes the math a little bit more work that's unneeded. So that is just the um, basics of equilibrium for a iron ball or something being held up by two ropes.